Okay, this is video number two of our fraction review basics. Uh, make sure you have your notes ready to fill in with you. And if there's anything that you have questions on, make sure you circle that or put a star by it so you can ask me. And then feel free to pause or rewatch it or slow it down if you need to while you're going. So in this one, we're gonna look at converting between mixed numbers and improper fractions. We're gonna also convert between fractions and decimals. And then we're gonna talk about least common multiples and least common denominators. So here we go. Let me, first topic is converting mixed numbers to improper fractions and back. So improper fractions and mixed numbers both represent amounts that are greater than one. Remember this is our greater than symbol, more than one whole. So we're talking about things like three and a half or four and two thirds. Those would be mixed numbers where the whole number is written out front or improper fractions, seven halves, five-thirds, um, just regular fractions, but where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. I have more pieces than it takes to make a whole. So to convert an improper fraction to a mixed number, we're going to divide. Divide the numerator by the denominator. How many times it fits in, that's the whole number part of your answer. Put your remainder that you get as the new numerator, so put that on top, over the original denominator. Let's look at a couple examples. 17 thirds, that's going to be 17 divided by 3. So I'm going to do 17 divided by 3, goes in 5 times, that gives me 15, and a remainder of 2. So the uh, number of times it fits in is my whole number. The remainder down here that I got, a remainder of 2, is my new numerator over the original denominator. So 17 thirds is equal to five holes and two pieces left over, five and two thirds. How about 36 fifths? Well, 36 divided by five, five goes into 36 seven times. That would be 35 with one left over. So again, how many times it fits in, that's how many holes I can make. And then my remainder down here, remainder of one, means I have one fifth left over. Seven holes and one fifth. Okay, how about if I want to convert a mixed number to an improper fraction going the other way? Now we're going to multiply. So multiply the denominator and the whole number. We'll talk about why we do this. Take that answer and add it to the original numerator that we already had on top and keep this over the original denominator. So let's look at an example. If I have one and five sevenths, that means I have one whole and each of those holes has seven pieces. So right there, I have seven pieces plus the five that was already up in my numerator. And it's all out of seven total, a total of seven, denominator of seven. So that gives me 12 sevenths. That would be the improper fraction that's equal to one and five sevenths. How about three and three fifths? Well, those three holes each have five pieces. So when I multiply those, that gives me 15 pieces right there plus the three that I already had on top is my numerator. And we're talking about fifths. So 15 plus three would give me 18 fifths. 18 fifths is equal to three and three fifths. All right. So here's the practice for these. Pause your video, try them, and then we'll check the answers. Okay, see how you did. Notice in number nine, I had to simplify that answer. So anytime you get a fraction for an answer, always double check to make sure it's simplified. All right, let's go on to, whoop, there's your answers. Let's go on to fractions and decimals, converted between fractions and decimals. So fraction, another way to think of a fraction is as a division problem. So for example, like three eighths, Another way of thinking of that is 3 divided by 8. So fractions can mean to divide. We would divide the numerator by the denominator. Okay, and there's two ways we can do that. If we don't have a calculator, we can use long division that we learned in, uh, like at farms, if not before that, or scale up to be out of 100. And we'll go over both of those methods. So let's just review long division real quick first. 96 divided by 8. 96 divided by 8, set up your problem. How many times does 8 go into 9? Well, it goes in once. 1 times 8 is 8, and I subtract those. I have 1 left over. Bring down the 6. 
8 goes into 16 now twice. 2 times 8 is 16. And no remainder, so I know I'm done. 96 divided by 8 is 12. Or how about 102 divided by 6? 102 divided by 6. 6 can't go into 1, so I'm going to look at 6 go into 10. 6 fits into 10 once. That's 6. Subtract. That would give me 4. Bring down your 2. How many times does 6 go into 42? Well, that's 7 times. 6 times 7 is 42. No remainder, so I know I'm done. And my answer was 17. All right, so let's see what that looks like when I do long division with fractions. 1 divided by 8. My fraction right here means 1 being divided by 8. Well, 8 can't fit into 1, but I can add a decimal and a 0, and now I can think of that as 10. But I've got to put a decimal up above that in my answer as well. So how many times does 8 go into 10? Well, it goes in once. That would be 8, and I would subtract and get 2. Now, since I have a remainder, I want to keep going. So add zeros, bring those down, and keep going. How many times does 8 go into 20? Well, it goes in twice. 2 times 8 is 16. Subtract, that would be 4. Got to keep going. Bring down another 0. 8 goes into 40 five times. 8 times 5 is 40. No remainder, so I'm done. So 1 eighth is equal to 0.125. How about 2 ninths? Well, 2 divided by 9. 9 can't fit into 2, so make it 20, but put that decimal place up in your answer. 9 goes into 20 twice. That's 18. It gives you a remainder of 2. Got to keep going, so bring down a 0. 9 into 20, again, is 2. That's 18. Going to be a remainder of 0. This pattern is going to keep repeating. I keep getting the same remainder each time. So once you realize that, you can just take this answer, and it's going to be 0.22 repeating. Okay, try the next one. So our next one is 8 fifteenths. Oops, I showed you the answer. Do 8 fifteenths, and then we'll go over the work together. So pause and try that one real quick. Okay, so I set it up, 8 divided by 15, and I got 0.533, and then I realized the threes were going to keep repeating. So 0.533333 can just be written with that bar over the threes. Okay, we said our other method was to scale up out of 100. Let me show you what that would look like. If you have an easy number that you can scale up so that you have a denominator of 100, that's another way to convert a fraction to a decimal. So let me show you what I mean. I know that 25 times 4 gives me 100. That's pretty easy to do in my head. So I can do the same thing. Since I multiply the denominator by 4, i got to multiply the numerator by 4. 3 times 4 is 12. And this fraction, 12 one hundredths, is pretty easy. If I just think of the name 12 one hundredths, that would be that decimal, 12 hundredths. Okay, how about 8 fiftieths? Well, I see that 50 times 2 would give me 100 on the bottom. So 8 times 2 is 16, 16 hundredths. That is that decimal. How about 20? Can you get 20 up to 100? Yeah, if I multiply by 5, so 11 times 5 gives you 55. 55 hundredths is this decimal. And that's it. All right, so try a couple of those. Pause the video, and then we'll check our answers. Okay, check and see how you did. For all of these, you either need to show the long division, do it all out, or if it's easy to scale it up so that the denominator is 100, you could do that too. Don't forget your repeating bars if there's decimals that keep repeating. All right. On to changing decimals into fractions. So we talked about this a little bit, how these place values all have a name, and that's going to help us. So let's go through them. If you want to write down this example, 0 0.01234. This is the tenths place, so that means out of tens. The two is in the hundredths place, out of 100. The three here is in the thousandths place. And the 4 is in the 10,000s place. 
So if you remember those different place values, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, we'll be able to convert. Here we go. So 64 hundredths means 64 out of 100. And then I just have to simplify that. Or 4 tenths, this is in the tenths place, 4 tenths, and I would simplify that. And here I have tenths, hundredths, thousands, 35 thousands, so 35 out of 1,000. All right, take a second to simplify those and do the practice in the next row, and then we'll check your answer. So pause and then come back and check. Okay, here's what I got. I simplified the top row um, as far as they could all go, and then check your answers to the practice. If you have any questions on this, make sure you make a note and we can go over it some more in class. Okay, our la oh nope, here's your practice with these. So do these real quick, again, pause, and then we'll check. So I wrote each of these out with the tens, hundredths um, as a fraction, and then just made sure they were simplified. Make sure you look here at number 17. This is a whole number, so I had a whole one plus five tenths, and then that five tenths just had to be simplified down to one half. Okay, this is the last topic, uh, second to last topic of our um, second video. So LCMs, least common multiples. Least means smallest, common means shared, and then multiples. So multiple is going to be a number that when you multiply like your multiplication chart times one times two times three times four all of those answers are the multiples let's look at a couple ways we can find a least common multiple try the bigger number so for example in four and twelve if four goes evenly into twelve twelve is going to be your smallest common multiple that they both go into evenly so four and twelve the first thing they both go into is going to be twelve Second way, list out all the multiples for both and then find the, the smallest one that they share. So for example, multiples of 6, 6, 12, 18, 24, and then 30, 36, 42, let's stop there and see about 7, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, soon as I get one that they both share, that's my least common multiple for both of them. So 42. Third method, multiply the two numbers together. So if you're thinking of all the multiples of 8 and all the multiples of 11, and you say, hmm, I really can't think of one that they both go into, try just doing 8 times 11. 88 is going to be actually the first number that they both share, that they both go into evenly. So, Finding an LCM for 6 and 9. Well, I know 9 is not going to work, so I have to just start listing out the multiples. 9, 12, 18, <laughs> sorry, not 12 at all. 9, 18, 27, let's go with 6. 6, 12, 18. Oh, as soon as I have one that they share, that's the smallest common number that they both go into, the LCM. 5 and 8, 5, 10, 15. I could keep going, but I kind of know the pattern for the 5s. So let's go with 8. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. Oh, I'm pretty sure 5 is going to go into 40. That's going to be the first one that they both share. So sometimes you can work through it in your head. Sometimes you need to list them all out. Here's practice finding common multiples. So pause, write down your answers, and then we'll come back and check. So here's the answers. Check and see how you did. Sometimes it takes a little bit of work to write them all out. And our last topic. So we're actually going to stop here. We're out of time, but we'll start our next video with rewriting fractions with common denominators.